Super NES RPGs were the best. Final Fantasy VI, Earthbound, Chrono Trigger. To me, this was the absolute greatest time in gaming. But good things don't last forever. As Nintendo started to talk about their new Ultra 64 console, it was clear that the Super Nintendo days were coming to an end. But screenshots of new 64-bit RPGs and game magazines gave me hope for what would come next. One by one, all of those games got cancelled, but hey, at least we got Quest 64. But a few years later, after some of that bitterness washed away, I came across a bunch of screenshots that kind of brought these hopes back. This is the story of Chrono Resurrection. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you can probably tell based on my song choices that Super NES RPGs were a big deal to me. And although there are a lot of classic JRPGs that came out after the Super NES, to me there was never really anything that captured that same magic again. But maybe part of that feeling is just because of all the time screenshots and Nintendo power got my hopes up only to leave me waiting around like Fry's dog. Final Fantasy 64. You could probably hear the saltiness in my voice because doing the research for this video got me all agitated about this game again. So it starts in 1995 as game magazines start to publish pictures of what appears to be Locke, Terra, and Shadow from Final Fantasy VI in full 3D. Some of these magazines call it Final Fantasy 64, some of them call it Final Fantasy VII, and then the one that really took the ball and ran with it was Game Players. They published a whole article about how this was definitely Final Fantasy VII and it's coming out in December of 1996. But Game Players was full of shit, because this was definitely not Final Fantasy VII and it was definitely not coming out, ever. What this actually was, was a tech demo where Squaresoft was simply experimenting with ideas for the next Final Fantasy game. They were trying to see what they could do with the upcoming Nintendo 64 DD, and considering that what they wanted to do with Final Fantasy VII would have taken 30 DD discs as opposed to 3 PlayStation discs, that was the end of that. But Squaresoft wasn't the only game in town. It was HAL Laboratories that developed what was one of the last great RPGs of the 16-bit era, of course, I'm talking about Earthbound. And where Final Fantasy 64 failed, Earthbound 64 would surely succeed, right? And unlike Final Fantasy 64, there were a lot of different pictures, a lot of different scenes we would see in magazines from this game. In particular, there is a picture of a 3D nest that really made my imagination go wild. And even better, this was actually supposed to be a release title for the 64 DD. But then you could look at the pack watch in the back of Nintendo Power and see that release date getting pushed back further and further. And then they changed it from a DD game to a regular Nintendo 64 cartridge. And as people seem to be giving up on the game, there's a tiny glimmer of hope at Nintendo Space World 1999. It was at this show that there was a playable demo of Earthbound 64 and an announced release date of March of 2000. But March of 2000 comes along, there's no Earthbound 64, and then finally, in August, they unceremoniously announced that, yeah, Earthbound ain't coming. And as for that playable demo, who knows where that thing is. It might be rotting away in somebody's basement, maybe they threw it in the garbage. <laughs> Can you imagine if somebody threw Earthbound 64 in the garbage and that's just it, it's just gone now? But in retrospect, thinking about these two games, I realized that I was hoping for something that was never planned to ever actually come out. Final Fantasy 64 would become Final Fantasy 7 and it was a classic. Not as good as Final Fantasy 6, but you know, a classic nonetheless. The story that was meant to be told in Earthbound 64 was eventually told in Mother 3, and yeah, that game never received an official English version, but we all played the patch. What was really building up in my mind was this idea of playing as these characters from my favorite 2D RPGs, Locke, Terra, Shadow, Ness, in 3D. And even though that specifically was never really on the menu, it's clear that I wasn't the only one who was thinking that way. At the same time that I was growing increasingly frustrated with all these cancellations, a young developer named Nathan Lazar was thinking about how he could make his own. Well, I remember wondering back in 1999 what a 3D Chrono Trigger would look like. I realized at the time that I had to learn programming to accomplish my dream. So I started researching programming, which I had no previous experience with. In the process of learning how to program, I also learned a lot about console programming thanks to extensive research 
and development on Nintendo 64 and PS1. And so it began. I started to create a demo of Chrono Trigger on the Nintendo 64 as an application of what I learned. After beginning to develop his programming skills and making some small homebrew projects, Nathan started to work on his own Chrono Trigger remake that he entitled CT64. The plan for CT64 was to have two separate modes. The first mode would be a 2D mode with enhanced graphics and 3D spell effects. The second mode would be fully 3D with some cinematic camera angles based on the Ocarina of Time. Does a project like this sound a bit too ambitious for a fledgling programmer? Well, as it turns out, it was. In 2000, a year after work on CT64 began, Nathan brought the project to a hold. Nathan felt that his programming skills just weren't what they needed to be to accomplish what he wanted, and he wanted to take some time off to improve them. And it was during this time off that he received a job offer that would take him to Montreal to work for DC Studios. No relation to DC Comics, I'm talking about the company that made the Bratz game. Break it down. Nathan worked for DC Studios for three years until he needed to take a significant amount of time off due to health issues. And it was during this downtime that his mind went back to CT64. Although he was undoubtedly happy to be working in his dream industry, perhaps working for the company that made Mia Hamm Soccer 64... Oh, great touch on the ball. ...wasn't quite what he had envisioned when he was trying to make Chrono Trigger 3D. So Nathan went and updated the personal project section of his blog. Chrono Trigger Brink of Time. This was a personal project of mine a few years back. I decided to reopen my interest in this because it dawned on me that I never finished the project. I don't like not finishing things. The Chrono Trigger remake project was alive once again, this time known as Chrono Trigger Brink of Time. Nathan quickly began assembling a team of hardcore Chrono Trigger fans, including Matthew Valente, who was his original musician from CT64. Having more experience now, Nathan also had a better idea of the kinds of resources it would take to bring a project of that scale to fruition. So he narrowed down his goals a little bit, and rather than remake the entire game in 3D, he decided to stick to 10 scenes that would link together major set pieces. A lot of people did ask him about the full remake, but he said that the only way that would be possible is if Square Enix themselves said, yeah, let's fund this project. Work on Chrono Trigger Brink of Time began in April of 2003. Throughout the following year, he would provide sporadic updates, but it was still a very low-key project. At some point, he released a teaser image of the project, which was now renamed to Chrono Trigger Resurrection. This image got some people interested, but it was nothing compared to what would happen in May of 2004. It was in May of 2004 that, planned to coincide with E3, they released the official website for Chrono Resurrection. Welcome to the home of the Chrono Trigger Resurrection Project. We have been vigorously working for the past year on this project, and we are excited to bring it to the public eye, in full for the first time. Chrono Trigger Resurrection is a 3D remake of Square's SNES classic Chrono Trigger. The demo, which will be released on Christmas 2004, recreates 10 of the best scenes from the original game. Currently, the demo is 25% complete. We expect to release a trailer when the demo is over 50% completed, which should be around the end of August. When the project is completed, only the PC version will be released to the public for free. The GameCube and Xbox ports are internal and only official developers for those respective platforms will be able to play them. There are various screenshots of the scenes, characters, stock art, concept art, and even some sample music located in the media section. We invite you to navigate around the rest of the website to find out any information about the project and post your thoughts on the forums. We hope you look forward to our next news update. Chrono Trigger Resurrection Team. And those screenshots in the media section were a game changer. The quality of those images far exceeded what anybody would ever have expected, especially at that point in time, what a fan game might look like. These images perfectly captured the vision of a 3D Chrono Trigger, and with Final Fantasy 64 and Earthbound 64 distant memories, it was bringing some of that same hope back to life. As a result of this, Chrono Trigger Resurrection started to receive a ton of coverage on different game websites. Basically, any gaming forum you could go to, it became the talk of the town. The official website was getting slammed with traffic to the point where they had to upgrade their hosting service. But it wasn't just the fans who were noticing this. As the game started to receive more and more attention, Nathan started to notice that the website was receiving traffic from IP addresses that were connected to Square Enix. 
At first he was alarmed, but then this traffic persisted for three months. Because so much time had passed without them ever hearing from Square, they assumed the traffic was coming from employees who were just curious. Or maybe the unlikely scenario that people had been asking for was coming true and Square was ready to fund a 3D Chrono Trigger. But then on August 24th of 2004, Nathan received a correspondence from the law offices of Kirkpatrick and Flockhart on behalf of Square Enix. We understand that you are developing Chrono Trigger Resurrection, a 3D remake of our client's Chrono Trigger game which will recreate scenes from the original game. Your conduct in this regard constitutes copyright infringement and, inter alia, violates our client's exclusive rights to prepare derivative works based on its copyrighted work. Your use of the words Chrono Trigger in connection with your remake and on your website opcoder.com and your use of logos, scenes, characters, and other images associated with our clients' games constitutes trademark and copyright infringement and false designation of origin. Accordingly, demand is hereby made that you immediately cease and desist from further development, promotion, sale, or distribution of any project which is based on or derived from our clients' Chrono Trigger games and that you cease and desist from all use of the Chrono Trigger trademark and logo and all use of images or artwork from Chrono Trigger games. And this was kept quiet until September 18th when Nathan made this blog post. It's been a while since I have updated my website. As most of you know, I have been working on Chrono Resurrection since May like a mad dog. The project has since been cancelled at the request of the original IP owner, Square Enix Co. Ltd. While I am disappointed, I understand their legal obligation to protect their copyright. Here are some interesting notes about the production of Chrono Resurrection. Only 3,000 man-hours were consumed creating content for the six-scene trailer between roughly five people. We plan to have ten scenes in the demo. As good as the graphics looked, if we had spent a full day instead of a few hours each day working on it, it would have looked much, much better. Those ten scenes were Chrono's House Upstairs, Chrono's House Downstairs, End of Time, Guardia Forest, Battle of Xenon Bridge, Frog Cutting the Cliff with the Masamune, Battle with Magus, Black Tyranno with the Zala Boss Battle, Dalton Battle on Blackbird Flying Over Kingdom of Zeal, Lavos Battle 3 Stages. Chrono, Frog, Mara, Luca, Magus, Robo would have been playable characters. Over 800,000 downloads of the normal quality trailer have been tracked so far. 500,000 of those were in the week of the announcement of the Cease and Desist. Over 300 employees from Square Enix downloaded the trailer within that time as well. Contrary to what some folks have said on the internet, everything we have shown is rendered in-game. This is not CG, that includes the trailer, smiley face. I have received too many emails with condolences and offers and I am very happy people have been showing their interest. The team and I will be moving on to an original project which will start pre-production very soon. If things go as planned, we'll have a website up with some preliminary art or information. Now, I have to update the rest of the site and start coding again. Smiley face. Until next time. So once again, the hopes of RPG fans hoping to see their 2D favorites in glorious 3D were crushed. But that's not exactly where the story ends. After all, on that project page, Nathan did say that he doesn't like not finishing things. And four years later, on February 20th of 2006, a video appeared on a YouTube account belonging to Nathan. Although they never publicly released it, obviously for legal reasons, they did go ahead and finish the Xenan Bridge section from the trailer. And four years after that, Nathan went and uploaded another video showing us one of the unfinished sections. Alright, that looked cool as shit, and it's making me annoyed that this got cancelled again. But this is a story that's going to be told over and over again because despite the fact that companies keep taking down these kinds of projects, fans keep trying to make them. And as for what happened to Nathan Lazar, in 2012 he successfully crowdfunded a game called Football Heroes. Football Heroes has grown into what appears to be a very successful series. So even though his dream project, that 3D Chrono Trigger remake, was snuffed out by Square Enix, it appears that that inspiration still led 
him down the right path. Anyway, if you like this video, you'll probably also like this really old one on my channel, asking the question of what the deal is with Siegfried from Final Fantasy VI. I'm out of here.